Moving on. Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude and part three of the Tamiya 135th scale Panzer II US Capture. So in part two, <clears throat> utilizing the Edward Photo Etch instructions, I removed all of the details um, on this kit that were being replaced with Photo Etch. So I had to cut a bunch of stuff off, shave a bunch of fittings off, uh, do some surgery on the fenders, etc., in order to get this to the configuration that I need. Now, one thing you'll note here is there is no fender on there. Now, this, these instructions call for a different configuration than the actual vehicle that I'm doing. So this box remains if you follow these instructions and you just use the little short part of the fender here to go here but the one i'm doing this box is gone it's not in place and there is a framework for holding like jerry cans or something so i needed this whole section to be covered so what i did is i just ordered another set so i can use one of these long parts here to fill that in now some may say that's kind of wasteful because you got this whole set and you're just <clears throat> excuse me you're just using one part well that is not entirely true and here is the reason why I have another one of these kits so I can use the remainder of this and build more of a fictitious vehicle not one that's actually in a photo reference state and um, for the part that I'm missing I can just cover it up with stowage or whatever so it's not wasted it just allows me to build another desert vehicle and I'll do it in the regular Desert Africa Corps scheme. So I'll get to build another kit with this. Enough of that. So the things I need to do now is I need to uh, glue the rest of this fender on. I need to cut the part out that I need. And I'm going to have to piece some stuff together. But I figure that I can um, make it work by when I make the, the rack here I'll just make sure that one of the lower parts of the rack covers the seam that will be right here because of this okay if that makes sense so I am going to cut the parts off that I need and then well as a matter of fact I think I'm going to do this one here first so uh, what I'll do is just like in all my videos I will demonstrate how I'm going to do something uh, on the first few parts and then from then on cut off cutting off of parts clean up and all that will occur off camera so as not to um, bore people unnecessarily so let's get cracking on this part first thing I'm going to do is using my handy dandy photo edge cutting knife and it's nothing special it's just when a blade starts getting dull for plastic I like using it for a photo edge and I'll just cut this off what I do is I just push it up close against the part let's see if I can zoom in a little bit push it in like this cut it push it in cut it push it in cut it and cut it and then I have the piece I need and then I check it and most of the time it's gonna see it'll have like a little bit of the uh, attachment point from the fret on there still so what I will do is I like to use my um, photo etch bender and I just put it right there like that and then 
and I get it really close so as not to bend anything and then I'll get one of my sanding sticks let's try this one right here and I'll just carefully sand that down I could use a file but I find that a sanding stick doesn't seem to be quite so aggressive like that Let's, let's try it. Let's try one of these so I can show you. Yeah, it's about the same. So I'll use this. It'll save my sanding stick. Flip it around. Do the other two sides there. And what I need to do is I need to get a bit of a curve bent into this thing because um, you know this fender's curved so what I did last time is I gotta find what I used I'm using this handle right here on this screwdriver and I just wrapped it and bent it around let's see if it was enough because I'm gonna clamp it down anyway I just want it to be somewhat already bent yeah that looks good so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue it on there there's a little bit of excess plastic, but I'll end up sanding that off once the uh, super glue has had time to cure really well. As a matter of fact, I might sand some of it off now. Okay, so using my Ammo by MIG Slow Dry Black Sienna Wacrylate super glueish type stuff I'm gonna glue that baby on there so I'm gonna put some right there like that replace the cap firmly get my high-tech spreading device here and put some uh, stuff on here so let's see yep so let's see let's go here all around the outside edges like this I want it to go out to the edge because if I have to do any sanding, I want there to be something there. So like that. So then, take this part, drop it on there thusly. And my main concern is to get it lined up with the outside edge of the fender. So then I'm going to use this clamp here and this clamp here. Like that. You know what? I need to make sure that that is. set up so while that is setting up I can take this opportunity to sand these right here because they're sticking out a bit so using my 400 grit sanding stick I'm just gonna sand that seam off of there like thusly Looking good. 
All right, so next, let's see what I have next to do. So we got that. Um, let me check that fender and see if it's ready to go yet. All right, so I need to cut off <clears throat> this long piece here because that's the part I'm going to use for this. So I need to cut it off. Like I did the other one. Like that. I'll clean it up like I did the other one. With this, I'm using these shears. Like that. Get a nice, clean, straight cut and I use this as a square so theoretically it should fit just like that splendid so then I can put the rest of this back in the package and have it ready for the next Panzer II I build And then, just like before, get this glue. There's not as much to hold here, so I'm going to make sure I get it kind of evenly distributed. Sure, some right there. Again, I'm going to have some stuff over top of that to kind of hide the seam, but I still want it to be somewhat decent looking. So we'll push that right there. Drop it in place. And same thing, make sure that's lined up really well. And clamp it. There. these really close together because I want to get a really good like that there we go all right and then what I'm gonna have to do is underneath here I'm gonna have to fill that in because there is you know there is a gap there so I'm gonna have to fill that in but that'll come later so let's see what I can work on next all right, <clears throat> so the next thing I need to do is I need to start gluing some parts onto this hull. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these screens on here. These three screens. I'm going to glue those on first, so I need to cut those off, so it'll be the same as usual. Um, I'll cut them off and then glue them into place. Okay, so I got the grills on that I had removed all the plastic detail, so I want to let that dry really good. So while that's going on, I'm going to glue this uh, turret 
um, the bottom on the turret and get that done because there's nothing to really keep me from doing that I don't think let's take a look at the instructions and see because I think I might have to put the <clears throat> mantlet in there oh let's see yeah so I got to put the mantlet part in place before I glue the top and the bottom together so I'm going to do that I want to try and get a lot of these bigger parts taken care of so when it comes time for all the photo etch all I have to do is just glue it in place so I need the base of the turret and I need the mantlet part here now one of my esteemed online colleagues said hey don't forget to get a metal barrel for that and normally I would say that is you are dead on right however I am not putting any guns in this kit and the reason I'm not is because the actual vehicle did not have the guns in it uh, the one that was captured by the US Rangers so that is why there will be no guns just the holes so let's see this goes like this so this goes on this side like that all right so that goes there and then this goes here like thusly pretty straightforward all right so i got some cleanup to do here these weird little bumps going on inside of there so i need to i need to get those cleaned out for that i'm going to use this straight whoops i'm going to go ahead and take that out so basically i'm going to cut them out All right, I got the parts cleaned up, so let's get back to this. Got that. And that, like that. So I'm going to I'm have to do something here. Some filling. But it looks pretty good. All right, so for that, I think, well, yeah, I can just use to me extra thin. Whoops, wrong one. that make sure it's all pressed down I kind of clamp this because gap keeps popping up right there if I don't clamp it I'll do this side as well. Cool. So let's let that dry. While that is drying, I'm going to put together the turret bin. Like 
take this. Set that aside. Let that stuff dry up good. And then I will uh, start working some more on this part here. All right, before I get back on this, there's something I need to address on this turret. So right here, there is, um, this is not flush with this. So there is a good gap there. Now, I could fix that a couple of different ways. Number one, I could just scrape that down and sand it smooth with this. Or... I could fill it in with some plastic like this. And I think I might need a little bit thicker. Yeah. Yeah, I could put it right there like that. And fill that in because that is visible when the turret is installed you can actually see that so it does need to be dealt with now I don't know that's pretty close all the way around there I don't know I may just uh, I may just scrape that and sand it down fill it in <clears throat> I may just do that it might be a little easier Ultimately, ultimately, what I'm going to have to do is uh, add some weld seams here and across the front and here. So, yeah, you know what? There's like a little chamfer right there that helps clear this uh, bullet splash guard thing. Um, so, I better just sand this down right here. And to do that, I'm just going to use my handy dandy sanding sticks and blocks and everything else. So, once again, I'm not, well, I'm not really going to show this on camera because it's going to be tedious and there's no sense in, uh, in doing that. You know what? I think, I think it would be best if I fill that in I really do <clears throat> excuse me so I need to cut a piece that'll fit and overhang this at least and then I can trim it down this way fill in along the edge and all that kind of stuff because I, I'm gonna use some like two-part epoxy I believe to make some weld seam lines or some welds for all those parts okay this doesn't have to be exact because um because i am going to put weld beads on there so i got it pretty close and there's going to be a lot of sanding and chamfering and stuff like that but this is where i'm going to start Got it pushed up against there. So what's going to happen is I'm going to I'm going to bevel that down a little bit. And then the weld will go in there. So do the other side. Whoa. 
Oops, I slid it. All right, so that's a place to start right there. So again, I'll let it cure up before I can do anything else with it, but at least that's ready to go. Let's see what other plastic parts we have for this. So let's see. Um, the lower hull is done, except for the front wheels, but I'm not gonna do that, or any of the wheels, because I'm not gonna do those until um, everything's painted. So, that's done so the upper hole stuff so let's start with um, stuff that's going to be on there for sure oh so I need to <clears throat> let's start with number three let's do the plastic part so we got number three which is the uh, front plate where the driver's vision slit and all that stuff is. Start with that. Get that sanded. All right, this front plate here going to get glued in place now i was just looking at some high-res photos um from a panzer II walk around and uh, there's some pretty interesting stuff there so there will be i'll have to make some weld seams right here very small though and somewhat faint it's they're not going to be big old chunky looking things hopefully but um along the top here and there's a pretty good photo, um, and it's on somebody else's site, so I'm not going to post the photo, so you can just take it for what it's worth, you know, I'm, believe me or not. But it looks like there is no weld right here. Now, I thought maybe it was just an angle or something like that, so I looked at this one here in the same series of photos, and there's obviously a pretty good size weld on the front of this, but there is not one here, just on the side. So... I thought that was interesting, and um, that's the way I'm going to do it. Do it for Johnny. Now, one thing to note about this, it can only go in one way because there's a pin there and a hole there. So, just something to think about if you ever build this thing. So, since that's a pretty good size area, I'm going to use this cement here, and then I'll fill in the edges with um, extra thin. So just run some right across like that. Smash it into place. Tighten the lid. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna use this, especially on these edges here. Make sure all the edges are down really good. So we got that. So next, I think I will do two numbers 21, which are the uh, vision flaps that go on the sides there. And those, there's like a little lip right there, flap, whatever you want to call it, that it just drops right down like that. Some nice little bolt detail going on. So let's see. I'm going to carefully glue it from the inside like that and make sure like that same over here <coughs> excuse me folks kind of froggy again today all this uh Whoops. There we go. 
So we got those. <clears throat> then we have 29, which goes back here. That one's set up a little bit different than the other ones in that it's got these uh, two angled protrusions that fit right there. I need to make sure I get that cut off because it would be impossible to clean once in place. Okay. <clears throat> got that <clears throat> the next thing I need to do um, there are two holes here on this uh, this hatch and those need to go away because the version that I am doing I think let's see yeah it's the the jack block goes there um, according to the kit instructions. But on the one I'm doing, according to my reference photos, there's nothing on that deck. So I need to fill those holes. And this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna take my handy dandy lighter here and some a bit of sprue from the uh, kit itself. And then I'm just gonna stretch it out. <laughs> like that we'll close up that lighter then I'll just cut that in half like that and then using the very same plastic I'm gonna create a plug like that there <laughs> and there then I'll just take some extra thin like that and you may not be able to see it but that cement leached up through that hole all the way around it so I'll let that dry really well <clears throat> and then I can um, cut those off and sand them but I'll show you that in a bit so while that is drying, let's see what else we need to do. All right, I think I'm going to work on this now for a little bit. So I need to trim this excess off. I'll just use my blade for that. Do this on both sides. And then with those cut, just take my sanding stick. Make sure it's sanded as flat as I can get it. Okay, I just thought of something. I, I want to try something that I haven't done in years. So what I've done is right here on this seam where that weld is going to go. I used my <coughs> um, UMM USA SCR01 scribing and scraping tool. Thanks HG again. Uh, and I made like a trench in there. Then I stretched some more sprue and I am going to glue this on here and I'm going to get it all nice and uh, soft with cement if I can get it back up there. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to get it real soft with cement and then I'm going to use a knife blade or something to make the weld. 
Okay, now I can't get it back into place. That's just phenomenal. There we go. Let's hope I don't get a big old fingerprint on here. There we go. First, I'm just going to get it glued in place. Make sure it's on there really well. like that. So to make these weld seams, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this back a little bit so it's not standing quite so proud of the surrounding detail. Like that. Then Taking this, which is testers, liquid cement for plastic, I'm going to apply some right there on the edge. And I'm just going to use the applicator that comes in the bottle because it allows you to put quite a bit on there. And I'm just going to flood the thing because I want it to uh, really dissolve that plastic. Now, the reason I'm using this over, to me, extra thin is this stuff does not evaporate as quickly as the extra thin. So it allows the plastic to get softer and um, thereby making it easier to do this. You might not be able to see it on the, uh, on the video, but the way it worked is it softens that up. And I just use this round, rounded in tweezer here and just went along smashing the weld bead. Now, did these have weld beads like this? I don't think so. I mainly did it just to show that it's a weld bead and to, you know, put a little bit of texture and contour in there to hold washes and stuff like that to make it a little more pronounced. Uh, but, you know, artistic license, let's call it. So I'm doing it here. I'm going to do it there. I'm going to have to do it across the front here. And then eventually I'll have to do it to the hull as well. But, uh, these other weld beads, I'm just going to leave them the way they are. I might try and soften them a little bit with some of the glue and texture it up a bit, but they weren't really that <clears throat> pronounced on the real vehicle. I'm kind of doing it as an exercise and to take care of this area right here. So, uh, yeah, once this softens up a little bit, I'll do it and we'll come back and take a look at what I've got. Uh, as another really quick note, um, this stuff, I've actually used this to make Zimmerit on a King Tiger. <laughs> yes, you heard me right. Basically what I did is I used, I drew the Zimmerit pattern on the front of the hull, put this on a couple of rows, let it soften up good, and then using this type of blade in my X-Acto knife, I scraped each individual line. Tedious. Never do it that way again, but it worked. So anyway, we'll come back and there we go. So I'll do these ones on the front and then we'll come back and move on to the next part. <clears throat> All right, so I think I am ready to, um, and I've got those weld seams done there and there. I may work them a little bit more, but I may not. We'll see, uh, but I need to glue these and this little piece here onto the turret as well as the uh, cupola parts. So I'm gonna start cutting those off. So I need 227s and 228s. which are right here. And then glue those in place so we get 
number 27 is the uh, ones with the vision port. This one so there's that and then <coughs> just the flaps go there got a little bit to sand off on this one I almost missed This one goes here. Like that. So now I can let that dry and I'll cut off these cupola parts which are parts one and there you go so here's where a person has to make a decision so this one here hatches closed this one here in case a tank man dummy is to be placed here parts two should be in open state and I plan on using a tank man dummy but of uh, American origin because this is a captured vehicle. So um, I'll get into my tank man dummy later, but for now, we'll just make sure we model this open. But we gotta clean it up first. Okay, there, <clears throat> there it is glued in place. Um, I couldn't really do it on camera because my fat mitts would have been in the way, but Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to let that dry before I try and put it on top of the hole. In the meantime, I'm going to take a quick break here and see if I can find me some Tank Man dummies. Okay, the hatch is all done and it fits like that. However, I think I'm going to wait to uh, put that on until after painting. So that is going to go in my awaiting further construction stuff. So let's see, uh, the turret bin is somewhere, here it is, um, and it's right, oh, you know what, I almost forgot, there is a little part right here, part number eight, um, part number eight, part number eight, thing about these older kids so they don't have a B and C sprues you just have to to guesstimate uh, where is it? there it is let's make sure that there's not some kind of a weird photo edge part that goes on there instead That would be a big fat net. So let's get that cleaned up and that's tiny. So that's gonna be fun to There we go. Alright, that one I'm gonna have to use some tweezelators for. That is small. So let's see. Okay, there's like a protrusion at the top. So what I need to do, put a little bit of 
and that there. Like that. And then this will go on here like this. <laughs> That's funny because you put that on there and it's like it doesn't even, it don't even matter. Whoa, whoa. I just ripped that part clean out of there. There we go. All right. So there's that. So I think I'm ready to glue the upper hole onto the lower hull. So let's take a look at that. Before I do that though, I almost forgot to fill in right there. So I'm gonna get some sheet styrene and fill that thing in. I think this thickness will work fine here. So I'm gonna cut out a piece real quick and fit that in there. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna measure it and then rough a piece out. So that's about nine millimeters by 32 9 by 32 so let's get my cutting mat out Okay, there it is cut out. So let's see if that fits in there. If I'll need to, man. Okay, I was a little bit off on my length. So I'm going to trim that off. Okay, that fits pretty good. So what I'm going to do, I'm mainly concerned with that side over there. So that's where I'm going to glue it. Actually, what I'll do is I'll use a little bit of um, super glue on the brass and then I'll use plastic uh, cement extra thin right there so let's see let's get let's do this just for ease of application Extra thin. Like that. So let's let that dry so it doesn't pop off when we're gluing those two parts together. Alright. So. Oh. I forgot to point this out too. Here is where I. Um, plug those two holes. With uh, the stretch sprue. I just cut it off flush. And then all I need to do is just sand it smooth. And then that'll be ready to go. Now I'm ready to glue this uh, upper hole on. So, something to point out here is on the front, 
this front plate here actually fits over this plate here and the way Tamiya has engineered it it's like this plate is fitting down on top of that and that is incorrect so what I'm gonna have to do so I'm going to glue the back first and then I'm gonna have to apply some lat lateral pressure like that to get this to line up and then I'm gonna have to do some sanding to make sure that seam right there is perfectly flat and smooth okay see if I put some pressure on it like that get it to line up it's way better so that is what I'm gonna do but I'm gonna glue the back first that fits really nice so let's get the old cement out here on each side like that and like that and then take one of my handy dandy clamps and being careful not to squish the center of the photo etch put this on there like that so let's let that dry all right that part is glued so now I need to do this part so what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna line that up Yeah, that'll hold it. So let's get the old to me extra thin here. Right there. Right there. Right there. And right there. And then give it a slide over like that. Make sure those holes are as lined up as they can be. And clamp that baby down. Whoa. So that's saying that thing's just sliding. So I'm gonna have to So I had to apply some more pressure that way. The up and down pressure is fine. It was just kept sliding over that direction. So I think I'm going to reinforce it by putting some more cement right down here on that side and right there. And then I'm going to carefully set this down so that it can dry. And there we go, nice and smooth. So now I can glue these parts on. So cut these off. And they're both the same. So I don't have to worry too much about which one goes on what side whoops what goes on what side now the funny thing is is I should have these are actually meant to be glued before but that didn't happen so I'm gonna have to cut that part off and just glue them in place 
no big deal. So we'll cut these extra bits off like this. And then there's an ejector pin mark there that I'm going to have to sand out. There's a pretty gnarly seam, so I'm going to have to... that sanded off. All right, they're all cleaned up and now I can glue them in place. So I'm putting a pretty good amount of cement on there because I want them to really stick good with no gaps around the edges. Now I don't think these were welded just in looking at some uh, reference photos but I do want to make sure that they are firmly in place. Now that's one of the problems about some of this older this older molded stuff is they're not totally square they can be somewhat lopsided in the molding so you have to maneuver it around a bit to get it to fit just right like that Okay, that looks good. So I'm going to put some more cement on here. And make sure it's really, really anchored down. Then we'll do the same thing with this one here. Both sides. like that. All right, with a uh, very few exceptions, I have pretty much gotten all of the um, primary construction of the plastic completed. <clears throat> uh, so the next part is going to be adding the photo etch details. So I think I will save that for my next video. So I'm going to end part four right here and next time in part five when I come back we'll be focusing for the most part especially early on in the video on all of this all of the photo etch details that are on these two frets here so that's it for now so with that in mind Thanks for following along with the Tamiya 135th scale Panzer II US capture project. And as always, if you like this video and you want to see more of this particular build or some of my other builds, or if you just want to follow along from here on out, hit the subscribe button. That way you can kind of keep up on what's going on. So until next time, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude, and I will see you all later.